It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. The, the Sports Hit List presents Smoking Mirrors with Declan Krogman and the Polius Brothers, Greg and Stefan, breaking down the news in sports, G- giving you the stories behind the story. Here for all the smoke, all the time, right here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Good afternoon and welcome to the Friday edition of Smoking Mirrors. I'm your host, Stefan Polius, alongside my fellow hosts, Declan Krogman and Greg Polius. It's been a fun week. How are you guys doing? I, uh, Greg, how's it going? I'm doing well. Can't complain. It's Friday. Happy Friday. So, yes. cheers to the weekend. Not yet. How are you All doing? Right. Well, it's been a busy morning so far for me. Um, hopefully, the internet connection stays together. Uh, I, I never know. You know, Monday was good, but... It's Friday. Honestly, there should be no one taking away from my internet connection right now. So hopefully, like I said, I think it's You got to send a message but to Friday's your building. Good. Week was good. You got to put the flies in your building. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nobody else is on my Wi-Fi, bro. But yeah, no, nah, things, things are good. I'm looking forward to the show. But getting into it, Tebow Mania. We haven't heard about it in football for a while. He's been in the minor leagues with the Mets, was in the minor leagues for the Mets. Stinking it up. Uh, toilet. There, you know, and, and getting an invite to spring training every year, but he has since retired his dreams of being an MLB player, and no one really knew what his plans were moving forward. But uh, reports came out after our show, really on Friday. I'm sorry, on Monday, that Tim Tebow worked out for the Jacksonville Jaguars, which when he was playing, that was always a rumor that he might go to Jacksonville. But uh, Urban Myers thinks that. Tebow could be a potential fit at tight end for Jacksonville, which is a development because when he was playing, he would he was against switching positions from quarterback to you know tight end, which would have been more fitting for him. But uh, he's trying out as a tight end for Jacksonville. Uh, let me ask you, Greg, what do you think of uh, the potential Tebow signing? <sighs> Where do I start? So there's a whole faction of people out there that think that people are upset with Tebow himself for coming back to the league and getting signed and kind of comparing it to Kaepernick. And I don't think these situations are exactly the same. I have heard that. Yeah. I don't fault Tebow for wanting to come back. Frankly, I don't think he wanted to come back. I think this has urban Maya written all over it. And this just continues to show the incompetence of urban Meyer at this level. I forgot the name of the strength coach that he hired from Iowa that had the previous racist tweets that had to fire himself. The dude resigned before he even started because yeah. Urban Meyer was so clueless as to the stories going around as to why this would be a bad signing in a league that's 70% black. And then you add in this Tebow thing. So you, you your guys taking 10 years off from meaningful football. He he's coming into a new position. Your depth chart already, already stinks and you're going to add a, player who's never played the position yeah they get an invite to camp but what you're doing is you're taking away viable snaps from competent free agents like a Tyler Eifert or like a Trey Burton who can actually play the position and be one of the better tight ends on that roster the best they don't have much on that roster that's what I'm saying and if you really wanted him to be a mentor to Trevor Lawrence or a mentor or a great guy in the club room hey guess what hire him as a quality control control coach you know, or hire him in some form of coaching capacity, not as a, a tight end who's never even played the position. People are foolish. <laughs> you're not you're not wrong on that. Not at all. Dick. And I think Greg's the last point Greg made is a great point, but you could hire him as a coach. I mean, Ben McAdoo was the quarterback's coach in Jacksonville. Needless to say, there was a nice opening there. If you really thought Tebow would be a good mentor, uh, maybe that's where you put him. It's nothing more than like this whole publicity. Like Urban Meyer is clueless. I kind of feel bad for Trevor Lawrence to an extent because now he's going to Jacksonville where he's going to play for a a franchise that, I mean, aside from the Tom Coughlin, Mark Brunel days, a franchise that has historically been garbage. So now you're bringing a guy who's never coached at the NFL level, 
who was a controversial lightning rod when he coached at the college level, which is why he left. He didn't leave for health concerns. He left because he he dropped the ball with the with the whole coaching staff at Ohio State. So this idea that he's back now and and now Tebow is going to come back, like they're probably going to cut Tebow anyway. Uh, but this is nothing more than just a ridiculous Urban Meyer move. Uh, and it's going to, it's going to be a shame. And yeah, like I see the whole little parallel between Kaepernick and Tebow, like, Oh, Kaepernick's been out of the league. He couldn't get a job for entirely different reasons. Yeah. So I see both sides to that. Um, but yeah, it's just ridiculous overall. We're going to sign him as a tight end now. Makes no sense. I think if Tebow was playing football and not baseball for the last five, six years, it would be a little different. But it, Tebow gave no indication that he wanted to even come back to football in any capacity. So when the signing happened, everybody's kind of like, um, why? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. No. It, yeah, it, it still it, doesn't make sense to this point. Like, let's just think about it for a second. You're signing well. a guy who ha- who's – he's literally been, been playing baseball up until what? This March he retired? It, yeah, something like it's, that. It's clueless. I mean, it, it's just whatever. I mean, I feel bad for – I mean, I felt bad for Tebow because, yeah, I know he wasn't a great player, but he was always a great guy. But, like, this guy gets whatever he wants. I mean, seriously, he wants to play baseball, signed by the Mets. He wants to play football again to be another position, signed by his college coach. The one thing I'll, po- I'll pose a question to you guys in regards to the whole Kaepernick thing, Kaepernick thing. if Jim Harbaugh were to get a job, right? I know Ka- I know Jim Harbaugh was, his co- was Kaepernick's coach in the NFL, and Urban Meyer was, was the coach at Florida for Tim Tebow. Kaepernick went to yeah, Nevada. Whoever the Nevada coach was back then is not going to get a job in the NFL today as a head coach. So I'm going to use Jim Harbaugh as an example. Uh, if Jim Harbaugh were to leave Michigan and get a job, could you see him being the one to sign Kaepernick? No, because it, at this point, it's it's a black ball thing. It's it, they, there's a concerted effort to to amongst the owners to not sign him. It's it's clear, cut and concise. Like I don't even look at it anymore when I, uh like the Nathan Petermans of the world are signed. I'm not out there like why didn't you sign Cap? Because I already know it's not gonna happen. I just can't see it. it, it it's it's more uh the league out against Kaepernick than it is a one coach is gonna come in and, and change the tide, especially a coach that um would need to prove himself coming back in and taking on cap would it just, it would be bad publicity for that organization. Wouldn't it be great for him to start off on that tone? I don't think he would take that risk. Uh, so personally, I don't think that would happen. I don't think Jim Harbaugh is ever going to go back to the NFL though, to be honest. I, I don't think, think he, I, I, yeah, I know. I'm just saying in that case, in the scenario that he yeah. is in your in this uh, fantasy scenario. World. Yes. Yeah. But one, one question I, I do want to pose relating to Tebow uh, is, Urban Meyer so far has made decisions, at least two in this case, that have been questionable. And we talk about the locker room a lot, but in this case, you bring in a guy like Tebow, maybe for leadership, put him in a new position. Uh, as a locker room, how do you think that's received when your new coach who hasn't played on the NFL, hasn't coached on the NFL level, is making decisions that you find to be questionable? How does that hurt the leadership? For Urban Meyer, you know, and then talk about the the tight end position. There's not much there. They they drafted Luke uh, Farrell in the fifth round this year, but they have a lot of nothingness there at the tight end position, unfortunately. So bringing in Tebow isn't like oh, it's it's there's a lot of talent there, but at the same time, as a, a tight end, how do you feel about you know Tim Tebow coming in and and having this shot where again no history of of playing the position. So, well, I guess, uh, Deck, I'll, I'll pose it to you. What do you think of the locker room's effect, Tim Tebow coming to Jaguar and affecting the locker room? Well, I think it could go one of two ways. We could be looking at a guy, a man of faith like Trevor Lawrence. is like, awesome, Tim Tebow's a great guy. Uh, I'd love to have him there. Listen, if I was there in Jacksonville, I'd be like, oh, Tim Tebow. I mean, it's so cool. It'd be nice to play. I mean, I don't know how he's going to play tight end. Stupid move, but nice to have you know, get to hang out with Tim Tebow. If you're a rookie, you're like, oh, I mean – Think about it. Tebow played in 2011 was was his best year. And I know he didn't have a great year that year anyway, but that was his best year when he went in the playoffs and they beat Pittsburgh. Yeah. Like, Slam Trey, route, boy. Trey, Trey Lance was what, 11? So if you get a guy that's like 11, 12 years old, now Tim Tebow comes back. Like who thought they were going to play with Tim Tebow this year? I don't think anybody on Jacksonville thought that, despite Urban Meyer. I mean, we heard more Urban Meyer taking Justin Fields than we ever heard Tim Tebow coming out of the woodworks. So – to answer your question, as, as, as a locker room, do I think it's going to put a negative strain? I don't think it's going to put a negative strain as much as guys are going to be like, why? 
it's just going to be the same question fans are asking. Like, like people will be ex- the guys in that locker room will be excited. Okay, it's Tim Tebow, great, but why does he have pads and why doesn't he have a clipboard? Is probably the main question that's going to be asked in that locker room. Yeah, Greg. To his point of why, I think the the point of why is why those players will be like, this doesn't make sense. What, what are we doing here? Question like so, and this won't be across the board. Some the more outspoken players. Uh, will question uh, what what's the sign in. And yeah, there's... So, and Carl is in the comments. He said it's marketing. All eyes on the Jags now. But Tim Tebow is not what's going to put fans in the seats. It's Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. And it's the like fact, you're taken away from that. The fact that Trevor Lawrence is the starting quarterback they won, and we've known it essentially for the last two years, that's what's going to put fans in the seats. Not Tim Tebow 10 years removed and playing a different position that he was told that he should have moved to 10 years ago. So I do think that people, um, the locker room, it could fracture it a bit, but I think the excitement around Trevor Lawrence will overcome that. I'm hoping so. And and you brought up a point. I mean, before we move on, I just wanted to to bring up that point. Do you think Tim Tebow does stick around if he did make the transition to tight end about 10 years ago? Can you see that world where Tim Tebow was in the league? 100%. I think think he would have been in the league much longer, and I think he would have been uh, uh, one of the better tight ends if he made the transition sooner in his career. Yeah. I bit of stubbornness there. I think he would have been we he would have been like the first Taysom Hill gadget player that we would have really seen make that step had he converted to tight end in like twenty twelve or twenty thirteen. Comes down to opportunity too sometimes as well, right? Like having a coach that or it was opportunity and also Tim Tebow's flexibility. I think that that's what made it impossible for it to happen. Travis says that Tebow can put fans in the seats. He thinks I forgot the area. I didn't forget the area, but I'm also taking into account that Tim Tebow is, again, 10 years removed from the league. Well, I know he's a name, and that's what the comments are saying and everything, but let's also just kind of make one thing up in the air. Like, one thing clear that's up in the air. He's not guaranteed to make this team. In fact, it's unlikely that he actually makes the team. Like, Mm -hmm. are we talking about putting fans in the seats in preseason? Because I I don't know if that's necessarily a goal of an organization who just drafted the best college quarterback, the best prospect since Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning. I mean, if that's where their priorities are, then this is going to be a, uh, a crap show. I can't say the S word, so it'll be a crap show is what it'll be. Yeah, I don't know if we – do we know what the restrictions are for uh, capacity for the games? No, in, not sure. Every stadium Florida, is different. In Florida, yeah. in Florida, I wouldn't think that it's going to be – Right? Bad. I don't think there's a cap. You know? Yeah. I don't think it's going to be too bad. Yeah. Well, it will be bad if you think about the amount of people that are going to go to the game that are not vaxxed it's and not going to be packed and, out. Yeah. Yeah, Carl, we've been talking about him because of the not well, because of how ridiculous the signing seemed. Not because we want to see him play. Notice nobody's talking about seeing him play. Not one person. Right. Right. And I and I agree with you in that regard, but I get what Carl's saying is because no one's talking about what he's playing. They're just talking about the whole or like the whole steam that's been generated around the move to Jacksonville. Yeah. Everyone's well, talking about that team when they don't yeah, really deserve the publicity that much. What they're saying is it is it's gonna put fans in the seats. But my point is just because they're talking about it, him making headlines, doesn't necessarily mean fans are gonna go to see him because again, like you said, Dick, he's not even guaranteed to make the team. They're going there to see their new uh franchise quarterback. Shiny new QB. I, I, I will agree with the, the comment section, though. I think there's a bit, there are fans that are going to go out there to see Tebow. Tebow, wherever he goes, brings fans. You know, like whatever he's doing, people show up because it, he, he's just that, that uh, endearing character. You know, whether you're a person of faith or you just like him as, as a human being, he just seems like a very good guy. And I think that and just his, his, his career and how he's always kind of found a way to, you know, whether it was through opportunity or, you know, hard work, a combination of both, he finds a way to make it happen. And I think there's a lot that people enjoy about that. And that can translate into more fans in the seats. So yeah, I don't think they're too far off. I think he's a very likable guy. And like, I mean, yeah, yeah he's a guy who he was homeschooled, went to Florida. He's kind of reinvented the wheel and, and really kind of, you know, put this whole like, I don't want to say he put like, you know, his whole faith in everyone's face because he did to an extent. But he did it in a way that was acceptable. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say Tim Tebow's a bad guy. He seems like a really nice dude. I would love, I would love to hang out with him. Are you kidding me? I mean, I mean, if we're talking about putting fans in the seats and stuff, this is a guy who he was on pace to make the, uh, I think it was the AAA All Star game, uh, and he broke his wrist and then the <laughs> went down for the tickets. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing at uh, 
this uh, snug cat. Uh, I'm assuming it's a it's a troll Facebook account, but he he did bring up a point that I think about. Tebow is not it's not just about fans; it's about dollar signs. People will go out and buy Tebow jerseys and things of that nature. So that is a fair counterpoint that he will bring dollars to the organization. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. That is a, a very good point. And I think ultimately, when you're talking about a down a down season or down year where they weren't making enough money because the lack of fans. Bringing in someone like Tebow, you, you're, ta- you're cashing in, right? They're, they're definitely going to cash in. Um, Tebow mania is very real. <laughs> We've it seen is, it time it and time again. They yeah. always show up. We'll see. I mean, if, if, I think he, he might make the team. It, again, there's not much depth there at tight end. The only good thing out of the uh, number change rule is that Tebow can wear 15 and not like 47 <laughs> or oh. oh, Carl said the uh, – okay, I see what Angle Carl is playing. He said the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars – uh, is a pro wrestling owner. So this is the angle and the headline. Shot type Gallium, of thing. his name. Yeah. Mm, Shot so, okay. That makes sense, Carl. He's playing the the um, the storyline card. Yes. Copy. Tebow from the top rope. <laughs> and, uh, whatever stadium they play at. I forget what it is now. Yeah, I was uh, one point I was going to make when I was looking at the depth chart. There's a there's a guy named Chris Manhurts who I didn't know about before this uh, before looking at it. He's more of a defensive tight end. He's about 12 receptions and 70 appearances. Like that's the quality of tight end they have right now. So if Tebow is now your you you cut one of them and you add Tebow, you're already banking more. You're you're, you're he's already a name that every other tight end on this list isn't that. You know, you're hoping that Tyler Davis, who was there last season, I don't think he had a snap. Um, sophomore year now, maybe he he gets more snaps. Hopefully he gets more snaps. He can do something for you. And then Luke Farrell. Like, maybe he is your, your fifth-round pick. Maybe he does come up and he's productive. But I don't think it hurts them at all to keep Tebow on this roster. I mean, and let's just hope when it comes to blocking, he he's not like a, a – uh... A turnstile, because that would suck for Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Travis McKay, didn't he say he was wearing 81 to honor uh, Aaron Hernandez? I'm not sure. Travis has been, Travis has been played by a meme account. Mm. <laughs> and believes that he's going to honor Aaron Hernandez by wearing number 81. Well, well then. Uh, we're we're going to go into us. break on that. <laughs> Stick around. We're going to be talking about the NFL schedule when we come back. This is Smoke and Mirrors, presented by the Sports Hit List on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And we'll be right back. It is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. <laughs> this is Smoke and Mirrors on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Deck had to get uh, pretty before the camera got back on, right? I just got to shower and stuff. Like, I got to get my Uh, stuff together. That's too funny. You had a whole commercial break to do that, and you still got caught. Well, welcome back with the Smoke and Mirrors, presented by the Sports Hitlist on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I'm your host, Stephen Polius, alongside Declan Crodman and Greg Polius. We were talking a little Tebow before break, and we're going to stick around with the uh, stick with the NFL. We're talking about the uh, the schedule. All right, so it did. The NFL schedule did come out a while back, but. Just recently, did we find out what week, what weeks each team would be playing? So again, we have an eighteen-week um, NFL. Declan's favorite new rule. Yes, <laughs> which which is going to it's going to be interesting to say the least. But with the with the schedule, you know, they always release a strength of schedule, which is it's like a, a fun, way, a interesting way to see where your team stands and how good of a chance they really have of you know maybe coming out on top. Uh, they have it listed. The easiest schedules for teams right now are Eagles, Cowboys, Falcons, but the hardest being the Steelers, Ravens, Bears, Packers, kind of their top three, top four hardest. The Jets and the Giants fall somewhere in the middle of Giants on the latter half, 25th um, uh, strongest schedule where the Jets are 19th. Um, but when you look at the schedule, you look at the, the teams being played, there's some marquee games and matchups out there. Uh I'm going to start with you, Greg. What do you think? What is your marquee matchup that you're seeing for this the schedule release? So there's a few. Um, I definitely want to see – this sounds really bad, uh, but I kind of want to see Sam do really well against the Jets. Hmm. Wow. That does sound really bad. Yeah. That does sound I don't want to see that too, to be honest. Yeah, I, because I do think he was given a raw deal. Um, yeah. And I'm, I'm, it's going to be nice to see him in Carolina with some weapons in week one. Um, also 
I think for me personally, Steph, this kind of speaks to our fantasy team. Uh, I want to see Rashawn Slater and, Ch- and Chase Young go at it. Uh, I think that's going to be a solid matchup. There was one more matchup, Jags and Miami, Tua and, and Trevor Lawrence in, in London. I'm looking forward to seeing Trevor Lawrence transition and seeing if he's going to be that prospect we all expect him to be. Yeah, I think we're all, we all are, right? Like, mm. he's been successful everywhere he's gone. So coming to the NFL now, like, what is that transition going to be? Is, is he going to meet the expectations or does he fall short? You know, he, he has weapons out there. I mean, the, the team could still use work, obviously, but I, I, I think that uh, Trevor Lawrence, everyone's going to have eyes on him. Every game that he plays is going to be an interesting game to watch. But, Deck, what do you think? What are your marquee matchups? Yeah. I think that's a great one by Greg because I'm really excited for when they pull Trevor Lawrence off the field to do some Tim Tebow Wildcat overseas. <laughs> that would be really exciting. <laughs> Could you imagine? Everyone it, wants to see that. I there's a world that. where that happens for sure. Yeah. If with Urban Meyer as the coach, it's a one. It, it's almost a foregone conclusion. <laughs> Trevor Trevor Lawrence better watch out for uh, tight end number one. He, Trevor Lawrence can become QB number two as a result. Never trust a man's allegiance to his college uh, quarterback. Also, uh, just to go back to the Slater Chase Young thing, I uh, I'm just gonna go out here and uh, make a prediction that uh, Slater is gonna uh, have the best of him, and the Chargers is gonna wow. win that game. Yeah, put it out there in the universe. Slater is a guy that I would have loved for the Giants to get. I think Greg and I were both on board for that before the trade at that at that 13 spot. Uh, wow, my hair. I'm never showering before a show again. This is bro. Your hair looks I, fine. I need you. Like, you're that fine. That was so nice of him. <laughs> oh my See, god! Hits me with that at uh, at one thirty on a Friday afternoon. Anyway, so <laughs> my game right now that I think is yes. the best on the schedule. I mean, you've heard it. I hate to go so chalk. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think it's the most exciting matchup at least at this point in time. You know, with the schedule release, it's Brady going back to New England. I mean, this is a week mm. four game. You're seeing tickets yeah. are already selling for like a couple thousand but like we're seeing twelve thousand dollars for like decent <laughs> seats for Brady to come back to New England. I mean it's unbelievable. Uh but anyway there's there's more ramifications and a couple little anecdotes here. Brady averaged like I want to say it was like two ninety yards per game or something like that last year. Uh and he's an he's X amount of yards away from Drew Brees' record and he's actually on pace to break the all time passing record for good week four in Foxborough. Against the New England mm. Patriots, that could be insane. Wow, that yeah. could be insane. That definitely great storylines there. It's it's unbelievable. Is that, is that is that a Sunday night football game or is it, did they make that? It the is. I mean, I was if, no, if it wasn't Sunday now, night. it would be. It, it, it would need to be. It, there's no way it on Sunday. Unbelievable. Oh yeah, uh, Steph. Yeah, it's something to look forward to. I think my my games. Yeah, my, my games. Uh, Greg, you brought it up. Jets, Panthers, uh, Week One. I don't disagree with you that I'd like to see Sam win. Like I want to see Zach Wilson do well. It, he doesn't necessarily he can do well and not win, so that that's fine. But Sam was given a raw deal. He definitely deserves better. Him going to Carolina, showing up the Jets, it's like showing them why they messed up. Like they picked him at three, and he was the right pick, and they didn't provide him with the weapons. So I hope he does do well. So that's one for me. And then I'm looking at. Uh, the Jags and the Jets in week 16. I want to see the number one overall pick versus the number two overall pick. I think that'll be interesting. It's going to be later in the season, so you'll have an idea of where they are as QBs. Definitely. But, like, seeing that this early and then being able to have, like, a statement game, depending, again, on where they where they are at that point in the season. But I think that's something interesting to have. And all, my last one is Lions-Rams. Lions at the Rams. Now... Everyone knows, you know, with Jared Goff getting traded, you have Matt Stafford, uh, Matt Stafford now that's uh, in L.A. and Jared Goff that's uh, in Detroit. That game to me is going to be a big one. Both guys wanting to prove something for the old organizations. Uh, Jared Goff really getting kicked out of L.A. in a in really poor fashion. Oh, um, <laughs> he didn't deserve it. I don't. I don't sure. like Jared Goff. I don't dislike him either. I'm very neutral on him. But the way that went down was just really unfortunate. Um, Sean McVay not really, you know, backing his guy. Yeah, when when you thought he thought, you know, I thought Sean McVay at least in um, in the media and out in front of the cameras would say Goff is their guy, and then behind closed doors, you know, different story. But I think that's an interesting game to look out for. I'm excited for that one. 
And Deck, I think you you take the cake though with the uh, Bucks and Patriots right. week four. It's especially so early in the season. I like, think that's gonna be fun. Stuff. All right, I, uh, can't, I can't take credit for this whole scheduling. <laughs> game. Never, no, know. and then the one thing that Deck oh, also mentioned was uh, Jags Bengals. Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence. It's gonna be a lot of QB stories. Okay. Um, so I think that's something we're also looking forward to. But I, I have a question to pose to you guys. All right. What week feels become the starter in Chicago? Ooh. Can, I, can I just pull up that schedule quick? Because I know they're going against yeah. the Rams week one. I do think Andy Dalton will wind up being the starter. Um, Definitely got Andy Dalton starting. Let's see. I want to pull it up too. It would be, fu- it would be uh, funny if he really got lied to like that. And uh, he was never the starter. <laughs> that would be pretty that messed DJ, up. That DJ Khaled uh, uh, meme would, would be the perfect one. Yes. And they're all opening up the season on the road in L.A. on Sunday Night Football. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck, Chuck said Maggie's going to tell Dalton to kick rocks. A field to start in week one. <laughs> Maybe. I think, all right, so ready? Looking at this schedule right now, I think he comes in week five against the Raiders. Bad team, gonna want to. Oh, shout out to Manny. Justin Fields gonna smoke your Raiders in his first start. Unless, <laughs> unless they go Week Four and they wanted to play against the Lions, if they think they're bad, also. So that could be a move. But was, even after that Raiders game, you got the Packers and the Bucks, so that's gonna be a tough task. Man, you that, might want to push them after that. You know what, Chuck and his media savvy makes a great point. He said NBC didn't give the Bears prime time games to watch Andy Dalton. That's that's not a bad that's not a bad point. Mm, that's a really good point. But it is Week One though. You know, it would be nice to see Justin Fields on Thanksgiving, though. That'll bring some excitement in that Lions game for once. That, that would. In like 40 years. Probably <laughs> on Thanksgiving. I, I, Deck, I was going to say not week five, but probably week four. You definitely want to get him in before they go against the Packers. In my mind, that would make more sense to give him a yeah. chance. Yeah, I think they so. got I think a gauntlet right after week five. It's yeah. Packers, Bucks, four, Niners, Steelers. Yeah, like, if you're going to bring him in, you can't do that, you know, week six, seven, or eight. It just is a bad Steph, look. I, I, I think I think you're right. You're right there on that one because that would make no sense to bring him in one game against the Raiders and then let him yeah. get destroyed. You want to try to roll by start, Rogers. Yeah, if you could start, and that's, that's what uh, that's what the Giants did with Daniel Jones was they played him against the Bucks and against Washington, uh, so he could get his career off to two and zero, oh, and then he could take a dump for the rest of the season against every good team that that came <laughs> in his way, and they could be trying to do that with Fields, especially if they're going to try to. Get him in against the Lions in the Bears. Yeah. I think that's a great Speedy, question. Speedy and Chuck made great points that that the Packers are only good if Aaron Rodgers is there. Yes, 100%. if he's there, Matt Rocker is not full of talent. I mean, that is a team that lacks talent without number twelve. That, on that, that, that team goes as far as Aaron Rodgers takes them. We all know. That. Absolutely. Did, was there a quote from Devontae Adams saying that? Um, I mean, alluding to him not wanting to stay around if Rodgers is there. Yeah, it was. It was. It was he vague, but yeah. it alluded yeah. to that. Yeah. He said he. He said he had his back one hundred percent, which. Is if I'm Devontae Adams, am I going with the Packers and Brian Gunkerst or am I going to go with Aaron Rodgers? I think Rodgers, I mean, that might be the path to go. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with Chuck on this. I'm going to go week one. Fields beats, beats Dalton out of camp. Wow. The talent level is just, it, it is, is too, too, the talent gap is too big, too wide of a margin for me. You think, you think they're going to they're gonna go aggressive like that? Because I think the conservative approach is the safest one, right? I, like you know, yes, starting, yes, it's the safest one. Depending how, on the preseason, I guess. However, Nagy's job is on the line. They have no room True. for error when you look at that schedule. <laughs> because then even after the bye, they have the Ravens. So you might as well put your 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 new franchise. They traded up, they traded a lot to get Justin Field. It's clear that he is the guy going forward. So you might as well start the season with him, especially if he beats him out of camp. I, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with it. I, I still am going to stick by week four. You, you can, you can, you know. I'm going to, I'm going to die, I'm gonna die on that hill with you. I think. Yeah. That's, that's a great <laughs> <hill>. <laughs> great you little know, spot there. It's, it's, it's a good like Lions, Raiders, get them started, warm them up, and then you go into the Packers, um, then Packers, Bucks, and also to get those snaps at that point, and then play against Rodgers, and he, he doesn't have to win. He just has to play decent. You know, and then going against the Bucks, like you're really getting tested right there, and that could set the tone for his career. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like I'm telling you, man, the what the what the Bears traded for him to move up, and 
it, it, I find it very hard to believe, given what Andy Dalton, Andy Dalton did last year with weapons in Dallas that are better than the weapons in Chicago, yes. I find it hard for him to beat Justin Fields. I will say again, Andy Dalton, we said this before when we were talking about Andy, he didn't get first-team reps. He got thrown into that starting role and tried to do what he could in with, again, no reps and just no very little time to perform. Either. Yeah, no preseason. So I, I'm not saying Andy Dalton is, is good. Like, he was, he was going to give you, like, a, a stellar QB1, you know, stat line. But I do think he was better than what we saw. And that being said, you will take the veteran sometimes, will play over the rookie, just knowing that he can learn the playbook faster, make the adjustments that the, the rookie can't, and you don't have the growing pains. So, yeah. again, it's going to come down to OTAs. I think it's going to come down to preseason. We're going to see what Andy Dalton does. If Andy Dalton is like stumbling throughout that process, I can see, I can see Fields week one. But if he's not stumbling, even, if he's doing what he has to do, he's starting. I don't even think it has to be a continuous stumble. I think if he stumbles once, once? did you, did you one did, bad preseason right. game? Yeah, <laughs> look at the if you look at the picture of all of the quarterbacks drafted in the first round, mm-hmm. all of them look happy with the exception of Justin Fields. That man has a a massive chip on his shoulder, the size of the state of Illinois, uh, for what 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 he felt was a slight. Right, that one. That was <laughs> That was good. I got to give you that one. Right. <laughs> he deserved. I mean, and, and as he should, should though. This is this is a guy again. One B to Trevor Lawrence. How do you fall to eleven? You know, and, and, he, and, and, and it, it, it was a trade up. That was a trade up for them to get him. You know, so I, I think him. that there, <laughs> there's a huge chip. Oh, but Daniel, don't don't let Daniel Jones hear that. Uh, yeah, Dak, you're his number one fan. Yeah. Well, <laughs> who else is gonna be? It's gotta be it's gotta be some poor soul. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad that you bear that cross. But yeah, I, I, I do agree that he has a chip on his shoulder. I just don't know if that translates into him starting week one. Uh, and it, for that, for, uh, and, you know, Mac Jones, where that falls uh, as far as where we're going to see there, because there's yeah, not a lot of talent out there. Super unpopular opinion. Mac Jones is not that good. <laughs> That's not that unpopular. Oh my god! I, I can't. That's a lot I like you know what, to me. Though? He's not a first round quarterback. He had some probably the best offensive weapons in the country <laughs> in a long time. In a long time, <laughs> you know. He had he had a, a Heisman on one side, and then he had you know a, a top ten pick on the other side. He had first round talent on the O line. He had a first round running back. It, it was just a lot there that went right for him. Yeah. Right now with Mac Jones and Cam Newton, I think that well, I don't think Cam has anything left in the tank, and especially with what we got in New England, I didn't think Mac would be that good. But there was one team that I was weary of. Like, okay, if he goes here, it could work. The Saban Belichick connection is real. We've seen it before with like guys like Joe Judge. Now we'll see if it can translate to the field. He could be good. He could not be good. The real question is if he winds up starting that week four game against Brady, if they want to go future versus what? That's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> How? What's ridiculous? I just, I just, no, 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 not, not you being ridiculous, but like that the scenario to me, just like starting Mac Jones against yeah. the Bucks. <laughs> it's like, they it's like to, what we would they would have, fields they would, versus, Honestly, they would have Packers. to go, they would have to go week one if they were going to pull that move. And if they decided yeah. that was best. Because it is possible that Mac Jones goes in New England and, and is just the better quarterback than Cam Newton coming off all his injuries. Nope, nope. I it's am that, not buying that, it. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say right now, like, Cam Newton's not good anymore. And I just, I do want to make that, like, well, <sighs> right, 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 right. Right. I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not even going to say anything. All right. We have to leave it alone because we're going to commercial. All right, we're heading to commercial. Dex dropping bombs before commercial, but well, stick we're around. We're going to be talking a little bit MLB. We're bringing in uh, Brian Crockman. Dex Pops is going to come and talk to us about a little baseball, a little fantasy. So, so uh, stay locked in. This is Smoke and Mirrors, presented by the Sports Hit List on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. It, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. This is Smoke and Mirrors on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.
Welcome back. This is Smoke and Mirrors, presented by the Sports Hit List on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. I'm your host, Stefan Polis, alongside Declan Krogman, Greg Polis, and Brian Krogman. All right, we have him on here to talk a little baseball. Brian, thank you for coming. How you doing, fellas? Great, great job with the football. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Well, thank you. It's, uh, it makes me happy getting a compliment like that from you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So let's, let's talk some, some MLB. Uh, we have uh, last night some debuts, some rookie debuts, which were exciting. Jared Kalinick, which both makes me excited and hurts me at the same time because he should have been coming up as a Met, but whatever. But Jared Kalinick and Logan Gilbert debuted for Seattle last night. It wasn't the, you know, extravagant debut you'd expect. Kalinick did go 0 for 4, two flyouts and a strikeout. But his first AB hit a hard line, uh, well, I'd say a hard fly, that uh, Josh, I think Josh... Naylor? What's the guy's Naylor? Naylor? Yeah. yeah, Josh Naylor made a great play on in the in the, in the the seats. But um, 0 for 4 for Kalinick. And then for Logan Gilbert, his line wasn't all that sexy. Four innings, five hits, four earned runs, five strikeouts, there were no walks. So there's some silver lining there. Uh, something to look forward to. Two talented uh, athletes that, you know, Seattle, my pick, to make it to the postseason. <laughs> they're going to use, and, and, and they're, they're going to be pivotal in them making that push. Um, Brian, you're new. You just started. You got. You just hopped on. What do you think? Did you see the game? What do you think of the, the these these young guys and the fantasy implications for them as well? I did watch the game. Um, it, it was nice to see Kelnick. He, he tried to ambush uh, Plesak right o- right off the bat. He swung yeah. the first pitch, <laughs> and that's how it happens. You always remember your first at bat. I mean, it's lucky Naylor didn't get hurt going over the wall like that in foul territory. Uh, Gilbert looked a little. Um, he was good. He didn't have any walks, but he did look a little wobbly. Yeah. Uh, he hung the slider to uh, Franimal. He took him dead center. And uh, the Ramirez home run was a 3-1 fastball. Uh, That's usually what happens, the 3-1 fastballs in the big leagues. <laughs> Especially the Ramirez, right? <laughs> got their Greg Vulcan change, man. You just got to snap it. But, uh, another Stetson product, right, this guy, 6-6? Six, six. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say that uh, from the research I've done, projections think that Gilbert could be like a number three starter. He definitely had some good stuff. He was attacking the zone, but he was leave, leaving the ball a little bit in the middle. Could, could have been nerves. Yeah, I, I, I definitely think it was nerves. You know, first time in the big leagues, highly touted prospect, all this pressure. You know, I'm sure it could get to any, any, any regular person. Yeah. By the way, guys. Do you... Oh, go ahead, Dad. I don't feel that with Kelnick, though. I feel he looks like very loosey goosey. Cool. He's smooth. <laughs> I just, I just, uh, you don't know if he's going to jump out of his cleats. Yeah, I think it's a little different for position players, though. Like for position players, it's a little easier to be relaxed as opposed to pitchers because you're literally controlling the pace of the game with each pitch. That's true. Yeah, good point. Defense controls the ball. Yeah. Do yeah. you guys think? Do you guys think that? Um, by the Mariners, do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that they called up both those guys at the same time and kind of made this like a marquee event for their franchise? Do you think that's good, I guess, marketing, or good on the pro- on the prospects? Or do you think that puts too much added pressure that they're now both coming up together? Um, I, I'll take you first. I don't think it's added pressure at all because of the time in the season in which they brought up. If they're in, a, in the middle of a pennant race, you know, and they bring them up, then that that's that's a lot of pressure. Like if he has to go if, if he has to go start a game in September and they're a game out of the wild card, a game out of the mm-hmm. division, that that's that's immense pressure. Okay. 25, 35 games in? Yeah, maybe that. I, like I that, think yeah. it's like 33, 34. Yeah, yeah 35 exactly. So yeah. Yeah, I think it's I mean I, I think it adds a lot of excitement, uh, especially yeah. like now Seattle already is playing well. Now it's like I actually wanted to watch the game at ten o'clock. Uh, yeah. Tampa has one to Franco. We all want to see him. Oh. They, tend to, they, tend to, yeah. they tend to this guy could be coming up mid to late summer. Shout out to Wanda Franco, Paul Austin's Jeff McNeil replacement, since he cut <laughs> Jeff McNeil loose on the waiver wire. I really can't wait to see this kid play. I've heard so much about him. There's just so much he does down in the minors. It's like, it's ridiculous when you when you look at the stat lines. And if he if he transitions and has like a fraction of that, it'd still be amazing. But if he could take all of what he's doing in the minors, the player that you know he's projected to be, he's gonna be a, a game changer. He's putting up and he's someone that you know he's putting up quadruple A numbers right now. 
<laughs> he's, uh, he's all over it right now. No, no, you, no. Just, you just don't want to be a quadruple A player. You know? I was just going to – I was literally – Brian, we on the same page, man. We on the same page. Same way, that, that no. Chris Woodward type of guy. Chris, no. Chris Davis Chris Woodward. for Baltimore when he was on Texas for a while was that quadruple A player. I think my dad was the one who told me about uh, – the def- defining the quadruple A, I think that was the example he used like 10 years ago or something. Um, but yeah. Well, one, one thing I did want to say, though, which, uh, you know, just a, a fun stat line. On, I think, uh, Kellnick's last um, AB, he had a line out to center field. Exit Vila was 100 miles an hour. So he wasn't getting cheated. You know, the, the guy was not getting cheated. He was going out there, doing what he had to do, and making sure it happened. You know, and, and I'm... I'm excited to see what he does, even though he should be doing it in a Mets uniform. <laughs> Never let that go, man. Why should That's I? So bad. If we if, have, if, let me ask have... you a question. Let me ask you a question. If DF if DS saves 50 games and the Mets win the division, will you will you give that up? No. Because because <laughs> we could have had any other closer that could have given us what Diaz is doing. Like since he's been a Met, even if he goes forward and he and he has a spectacular season, I wouldn't trade that type of prospect, that type of talent for a closer. You just, no, it just you're, makes you're sense. absolutely right. And a so, late, and a late veteran like in Robinson Cano. It's such a horrible trade, and I guess that's what happens when you bring in an agent to be the general manager. But <laughs> he's a guy who was so touted even before he was drafted, and the Mets got a steal. He shouldn't have even slipped to six in that 2018 draft. And then to tr- trade him away for a closer who had two good years and, a, and an <sighs> aging veteran – 57 saves, man. That was, that was all it took to, for us to trade for him. <laughs> but uh, speaking of the Mets, seven-game winning streak, and something that we were talking about after our show on Monday, Harvey Day took place at City Field for the first time in a while. Har- Matt Harvey taking the mound in City Field, which was, he was met with applause. He, he had a standing ovation uh, when he pitched in his first A-B, which was really heartwarming to see. Uh, I think he even spoke about it in his post game. You know, he was holding back the tears. Um, he didn't do as well though that game. The, the Mets uh, tore into him very early and often. Uh, game ended. I think all seven runs were earned, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for Harvey's line. But Taiwan Walker, great acquisition for the Mets. Had another solid start. I know you got him fantasy. Congrats to you, Greg. Uh, seven <laughs> innings, one earned run, three walks, four Ks, two twenty ERA with a one hundred and two WHIP. I mean, for a guy that hasn't really always hadn't put it together up to this point um last season you saw a little bit of it he's truly here and I think he we're seeing the best version of him right now which is really nice um uh Deck what 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 are you thinking what how do you how do you like Harvey Day did you get to watch the game um what were your takeaways from it yeah I mean I think I was at the cages with Jake for like the first couple innings of it and then I caught it while it was like the fourth inning and it was kind of already hitting the uh hitting the uh showers yeah that (laughs) That's probably the best way to put it. <laughs> the parking lot are in. Yeah, he was, he was already gone. Um, I was very wrong about how he was going to be received. And yep. Steph, Greg, you guys were on it. Uh, you said, I thought there would be at least a mixture of some booze. Um, 10, 10% capacity felt like 100% capacity with the way they were cheering him. Uh, so good for Harvey. I'm glad he's back uh, in the bigs. He's their number two starter on the Orioles behind John Means, who... Uh, I think maybe we'll get to in a little bit uh, with the fantasy guru here. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was a great, I thought it was a, you know, a nice environment. Good on the Mets for, you know, kind of getting there, I guess, reversing the revenge game a little bit uh, to, yeah. get, to get Harvey down there. But uh, yeah, I got to catch a little bit of the game. It was, it was fun to see. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I agree. And also uh, Khalil Lee came up, uh, prospect for the Mets. Uh, he didn't, hasn't played yet, but Someone to look forward to. Uh, the outfield actually has been looking really good. Uh, Pilar has been doing a great job filling in um, for Nimmo. Excellent. And- I hope Elmar is okay yeah. after eating that wall. Whew. That was rough. Yeah. Well, at least he's able to text because usually when you have a concussion, you're not supposed to be on, uh, you know, electronics. And he's out here tweeting, I caught it. So, <laughs> be all right. <laughs> and and but- VR has been... Uh, Spell in JD Davis. Yeah, yeah. another He's one. A really good fill. Really good fill in. I th- yeah. It's not even his offense. I think defensively, he just puts us our infield on another level when he's on. In, totally. On the, he's uh, six foot two twenty three. I I saw that and I was like, what? I thought he was like a small guy. He's a big dude. 
<laughs> and he moves really well for his size. But um, I do want to transition to the Yankees. Talk about the Yankees. You always got to do both of them. This uh, COVID-19 outbreak, which is devastating. Um, you know, everyone on the Yankees received the Johnson & Johnson shot, but they've 14 days removed from, their, from receiving the vaccine. They have contracted positive cases. Seven of the eight of those cases, I believe, have been are uh, asymptomatic. But still, you know, uh, a shocker. Um, it didn't affect them. I mean, the Yankees have won 11 of their last 14 games. Good amount of depth. But... Uh, Brian, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? The Yankees, are are you worried about, you know, I think Glaber's down and uh, he's out. I don't know who else actually on the Yankees is. Not that that hurts too much. Yeah, I, we're going to see the truth of who's who says they has the vaccine and who actually <laughs> has the vaccine. <laughs> uh, forgotten in this is Domingo Herman. We were all on, I mean, I was one of them in April. I was very disappointed. Uh, he has really turned it around. A uh, big start is... This weekend, yeah, I don't think he has more than one walk in, in every start he's had this year. His whip is down. He looks like he's really settling in, and, and Montgomery as well. Uh, I think they're be- I think they're built for the regular season, the postseason. That's that's a different animal. I think we're very vulnerable. Well, I, th- I don't think we have enough starting pitching. The big talk I'm hearing is about Scherzer. If the Nats are out of it. He's going to be a hot commodity over the summer. And I don't know who's going to win that sweepstakes. Of yeah. course, the Yankees and the Red Sox have mentioned it. Man, if he don't look like a Red Sox, he almost has a yeah. shilling S type of <laughs> But you know, you know what my dark horse would be? And it's not really a dark horse. Is how about St. Louis? He is from uh, – Scherzer is from uh, Chesterfield, Missouri. Yeah. And, man, if you have Flaherty and Scherzer going – with that middle of the lineup, nice point that too. Bullpen, that that could be frightening for any team to face. Absolutely. Um, if the Yankees were to get Scherzer, that means Dominguez would have to be in that deal. It would have to be something big. That's what makes me think St. Louis would be a perfect fit. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I'd be ready to give up Dominguez. That could we for could World like, Series. Uh, that could, really? but see, like that could be a, that could be a that could be a Kelnick kind of deal right now. Yeah, That's but Scherzer. Scherzer You'd be getting imagine way more having, back. <laughs> yeah, imagine having to face Cole Scherzer twice in a seven-game series. It would be insane. But like, for what though? For two, three years? You know, but it's, it, it's a World Series. Yeah, you can yeah. get the title. True, but oh, like, okay, no. think of this. This guy's getting compared to Mike Trout, right? If the Angels were going for it in two thousand and nine, which they were, because that's when they lost in the ALCS to the Yankees, and they said, "Hey, you guys can get Roy Holiday." But you're gonna to have to give up Mike Trout. You give up Roy Halladay for the one World Series run, and you, uh, you get Roy Halladay for the one World Series run, or you give up Mike Trout, who could be a perennial, could be the best player in baseball. I mean, sky's the limit with this kid. But I know maybe it's all hype, but that's what they're saying. With prospects, you never know. Last year's Millage was supposed to be the next big thing. You never know. <laughs> yeah, they could be killing it, but there's always that outside shot. Scherzer is a proven Cy Young arm, World Series winner. And this kind of kind of speaks to just how spoiled the Yankee fans are or can be because you Scherzer almost guarantees you guys at the forefront of winning the World Series. It doesn't matter yeah. who you play because the idea of having Cole and Scherzer four times in a seven-game series is, is unthinkable. And if you can't get the Grom, Scherzer is honestly the next best thing. Yes. Uh, I, I agree with Greg there. Um, it wasn't too long ago J.D. Drew was going to be the best player for a decade or more <laughs> yeah. Drew on the Cardinals. But I, I do think that when you're trading a prospect for a player like Scherzer, well, the prospect has a potential, but Scherzer is your commodity at yeah. that time. Yeah. His dream is to be as good, well, he's, to be an offensive player like a Trout or something, but he's not there. Yeah. So you already have the guy that's there already. So you kind of uh, take a conservative I'm approach no as far as – right, as, what to expect. Yeah, That's I, I kind of reminds me of uh, Michael Fulmer for Cespedes. The Mets trading Fulmer was like, man, that, that, that this guy, he's going to be a stud. Like, we can join the rotation. It, Syndergaard might be someone that's, that's expendable at that point. You know, like, that's how we spoke about him. Looking at him now, that trade was uh, spectacular. It was great for the Mets because he didn't really amount to much. But the potential always there for the prospect is something that you do want to look out for. So we'll we'll see. I think it's a good trade if the Yankees were to do it. Do want to uh, get some fantasy baseball pickups 
for all of the fans out there. What guys should they be looking at uh, uh, for their teams? I mean, it's been a few weeks in now. I that team has struggled. Uh, <laughs> so I could use some of the, this advice. All right. I don't know if you guys are up against it, so I'll try to run through this pretty quickly. Um, I'm not going to give you the big names that are not on the wave of wire. I like to give you like maybe 30, 20% owned in CBS, long, uh, CBS leagues. Yes. Like, like a guy like Hunter Dozier, he's a low, uh, he is a, a great guy. I'm low, low, low pad out. <laughs> yeah, I'm riding it down right now. I got some better <laughs> ones, but, but Dozier's probably not available. Yeah. But I got one for you. Royals. Robbie Grossman on Detroit. Mm. He is actually, he's available all over the space. Paid. He is tied for third with a bunch of guys with um, with seven steals. He, he is third in the league in steals, and he's available in 80% of leagues. And he's seven for seven uh, stolen bases, and he's batting first. So if you have the home run and the stolen bases, and you just need – he's not the center of your team. He's those those last two picks. Those uh, those stats definitely add up. Yeah. Uh, Harrison Bader on the Cardinals, another guy that's like a 15-15 guy. He hits well. Uh, then I got another one for you because remember I mentioned Kirilov the last time, and then he did come up the next week. Yes. I don't know when this play is going to come up, but Joe Adele has been forgotten on the Angels. Yeah, uh, They did not have a minor leagues last year. Uh, and when you wait for him to come up, he's going to be gone already. If you have that spot, he got a raw deal. He had some bad luck last year, but mm. you know, A-Rod was sent down. Uh, three times to the minus. You know, superstars can. Yeah, I would want to be ahead of, especially if you're in a keeper league. Uh, a couple other guys. Uh, uh, everybody's full in love with Gilbert, but uh, James Cabrillion on Oakland. He was part deck. You would know. He was part of that Sonny Gray trade. Right? Yeah, he was in the Yankees. He was on the Yankees for a while. Yeah. So there's a guy. Everyone shifts to Gilbert. You pick up Cabrillion. You hope that he really? he has some uh, some good times. He actually is going to get. Uh, a lot of playing time, a lot of innings, because uh, uh, Lozado is hurt and uh, Mike Fires is hurt also. Jesus Lizard. Yes. Well, all right. So now, <laughs> so now the other one is Albert Azale. He's a good pitcher on the Cubs. He has some bad guys next week. He might have some good pitches, but for the long run, Azale misses a lot of bats. And then I'm going to shift. I'll give a shout out to uh, a, a baseball podcast, uh, Rates and Barrels, with uh, Eno Saris and Derek Van Ryper. Right? Yeah. They coined the phrase oatmeal guys. Like, we're looking for all the new guys, but sometimes there is an older oatmeal guy, John Lester. He's just finally oh, settling in. Nobody's looking at John Lester, yeah. but you know what? He's pitching for a, which five innings in this day and age is the norm, but he could go six innings, one run, get you seven Ks. And uh, that's, that's somebody that easily can, um, can help your team there. If you're struggling and you, you're up against it Sunday night and you can't find uh, a starting pitcher, well, then you go for the heavy middle reliever just to, just to uh, keep the fourth down. Uh, Mir, uh, was it Yuzmiro Pettit? Uh, remember that middle reliever? Yeah. yeah. Petit, uh, yeah. I, I was on, I was on that one early in the season. He's he's <laughs> money this year. Yeah, Petit. Uh, I say Petit because you know you know it's a Yankee thing, but uh, Petit will go. With. <laughs> but what he does is he comes in these middle innings and and he is a safe play. And sometimes he vultures to some wins, and um, that can keep. He's got four of them already. Right, rather than like picking up a Gomber a couple of weeks ago, that was a bad one. I think he gave up ten runs. Sometimes you the, these two star pitches are out there for a reason, you know. So yeah. if you feel like your team, you don't want to take any risks, then you go with a guy like like Petit, and and you'll be safe until you find a, a better pitcher. Well, uh, Brian, I I appreciate that. I wrote all those down. Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> I, I definitely did. Gotta, I hope you wrote my wire real quick. That was pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I wrote a shorthand. I I got him for sure. Uh, appreciate that, Brian, and uh, everyone that's uh, listening at home. Uh, Brian Crogman. All right, our fantasy guru. <laughs> well, one more thing. Can I give a shout-out to Eddie? Uh, oh. I went up against him last week in head-to-head. He acts, absolutely took me to the woodshed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really? Eddie, Eddie, th- Eddie said he wasn't going to win. No, it was like a machine gun and a knife fight. He called me up. Shout-out to Eddie. I didn't even I know. Him. I got to check the schedule. Shout-out to Eddie. Yep, yep. Shout out to Eddie G, man. And the worldwide, uh, the sport, the sports hit list the other day with the baseball. 
uh, with Manny. Eddie was great. It was a really good lesson. I, I really did enjoy that. And shout out Chuck. Yeah, sorry, Chuck. Chuck. Chuck got a little jealous of the comments. He said, sick invite, guys. <laughs> next time, Chuck, we got you, bro. Yeah, sorry, Chuck. We definitely got you next I time, did. Bro. I did get to meet Chuck last week in person at the baseball game. It was yeah. awesome. It was like... It was like seeing a celebrity. <laughs> I agree. I felt the same way when I saw him, too. It was my first time seeing him as well. That was really, really cool. And he made the trip just to, just to say hello. That, that was uh, really – it means a lot. Oh yes. What a guy. But uh, that's going to do it for us on this Friday edition of Smoke and Mirrors. I'm your host, Stephen Polis, alongside Declan Krogman, Greg Polis, and Brian Krogman. We've had a great time. We'll be back at it again Monday between 1 and 2. Until then, have a great weekend. Take care. It, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.